hi and welcome back to rear window so first of all thanks a lot for such a rousing response to the first episode uh, i was actually going to record the second episode and put it up but uh, due to some uh, previous engagement i couldn't record it so i thought i would come live to meet you all and let's see how many people join us today uh, i am really grateful to you all for the response that you gave me for the first episode and that has encouraged me and propelled me to do this second one as i said in the first episode i am really lazy uh, and it needs great force to get me to you know actually come up here and record uh, an episode and then put it up on youtube so let me begin by saying that i am truly grateful and uh, that's why here we are at the second episode of rear window and this time the topic that i have chosen is where does a tune come from okay now as a music composer the most frequently asked question in my professional life is where does a tune come from i don't think any music composer has escaped from this question you know that where does a tune come from in fact not just a music composer even creative artists i don't think they have really escaped this question because i remember having uh, read uh, in a preface of an agatha christie book that uh, you know she is often asked she was often asked by fans where does she gets her plot from or where does she get her plots from now uh i think there is some problem with the bit rate yeah the stream health seems to be good okay so she agatha christie answered her fans you know she she said she is written in the preface that she was tempted to answer that she got her plots from harrods or marks and spencer and i think that is typical british humor uh, sarcasm uh, she did go on to answer uh, how she wrote her books and how she got her plots and where she got them from and essentially she said that it was a mixture of her imagination and the life she really lived so if you see a uh, lot of her books and lot of her stories that were written on uh, say archaeological background or uh, archaeological backdrop was after she married max malowan her second husband who was an archaeologist so the point is that although everybody is asked where does this tune come from not everybody is able to answer this question sometimes they don't answer because they themselves actually don't know what the answer to this question is see creativity is such a mystery that creative people spend a lot of time flirting with this mystery but it's difficult to explain it also there is a little hesitancy to actually think about the creative process for a creator they leave it to the critics to the analyzers but the problem is the critics who look at creativity from the outside don't ex- exactly know what is happening you know there is a famous story by of kabir you know he comes and 
ही टेल्स ऑल द विलेजर्स कि पानी में आग लगी है द रिवर्स ऑन फायर द वाटर इज ऑन फायर सो एवरीबडी आज सिम ये कैसे हो सकता है ये तो हो ही नहीं सकता कैसे हो सकता है हाउ कैन दिस हैपन इज इट पॉसिबल सो कबीर से जाके देखो सो सम थिंग्स हैव टू बी एक्चुअली एक्सपीरियंस्ड एंड दे कैन नॉट बी एक्सप्लेन पर बाय मियर लॉजिक एंड दैट्स वाई एल्फ्रेड नॉर्थ वाइट हेड हैज सेड दैट नो एल्फ्रेड ही हेज सेड दैट लॉजिक इज द सोल ऑफ विट एंड नॉट विजडम एंड दैट इज वाई विट इज सो फनी not everything perhaps can be explained by logic but that is no excuse from actually investigating what exactly is happening out there now why the reluctance is because you know till the river of creativity is flowing why do you want to know where this water is coming from whether there is a tap at the other end whether there is a stream whether that tap is on or off or it can be off or on so that's why creative people don't really like to go you know towards the origin and the gangotri of the river of creativity they will prefer not to go there till the flow is there nobody wants to question where it comes from because it's treated as a gift and that is why you'll see most of the creative people when they are asked most of the composers when they are asked where do you get your tune from they will point their finger upwards to the heavens and they will say that ye upar se aaya hai so they will give the credit to the almighty or to the heavens or to the gods now it helps them to stay modest but for a person like me who thinks that you know there are more gifted people in this world so i am willing to go with this answer some of the times with some of the people but not all the time with all the people sometimes you don't look up to the heavens to see where the tune has come from sometimes you have to look down and you have to dig deeper into the earth and make it happen now are there no gifted people of course there are there are gifted people but not all people are that gifted sometimes this uh, goddess of creativity pratibha the muse it just flirts with us sometimes it just shows just a glimpse we just catch a glimpse of this creativity but then on there's hard work so there is an interesting anecdote that uh, pandit ullas bapat uh the famous santur player had told me during one of our recording sessions and uh, you know in the 80s when he started playing for rd burman he said that because the songs were recorded on tape all the musicians used to sit together and record the music okay it was not like today where you are recording on the computer so each musician comes at his or her own uh, sweet time and then records their individual pieces and then they go away it was not like that people came together recorded the music pieces together and the arranger conducted so during what such session in the 80s he said there was a sarangi player who was sitting in front of me and he was playing the sarangi and playing it very well and there was a beautiful uh, melody that he played and immediately ullas ji you know complimented him saying kya baat hai the sarangi player in all modesty you know bent down his head and looked upwards and said 
जी मेरा कुछ नहीं सब ऊपर वाले का है नथिंग बिलोंग्स टू मी इट्स ऑल दी ऑल माइट इज गिफ्ट ही कंटिन्यूड प्लेइंग उल्लास जी कंटिन्यूड लिसनिंग अगेन ही प्लेड अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल मेलेडी ऑनिस सारंगी उल्लास जी कॉम्प्लीमेंटेड हिम अगेन बहुत खूब ही सेड द सारंगी प्लेयर सेड जी मेरा कुछ नहीं सब ऊपर वाले का है द नेक्स्ट टाइम ही प्लेड समथिंग वेरी ब्यूटिफुली ऑन इज सारंगी वॉट उल्लास जी डिड वॉज वाह क्या बात है सुख द सारंगी प्लेयर वॉज यू नो टेकन अ बैक उल्लास जी एक्सप्लेन दैट एवरी टाइम आई विल कॉम्प्लीमेंट यू यू विल से इट्स नॉट माई क्रेडिट द क्रेडिट बिलोंग्स टू दी ऑल माई टी सो आई थॉट आई वुड हैव अ डायरेक्ट कॉन्वर्सेशन यू नो इंस्टेड ऑफ यू इन बिटवीन दैट वॉज अ जोक बट इट हैज सम वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट लेसन्स फॉर अस एंड दैट इम्पॉर्टेंट लेसन इज दैट द म्यूजिशंस प्रॉब्लम इज अ क्लासिक प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स that there are unlimited wants and limited resources so the desire to make new songs is unlimited within the human breast i feel i should come up with a song every day but the notes in an octave are limited so you know that there are seven notes sa re ga ma pa dha ni and then we come back to so and then there are the satellite notes the flats and the sharps that is sa re ga ma pa da ni sa so in total there are 12 notes sa re re ga ga ma ma pa da da ni ni sa so now with these 12 notes however gifted you are however beloved you are to the almighty you are not told that sun for everybody else there are 12 notes but for you i am giving a 13th note no it doesn't happen everybody including mozart is expected to work in these 12 notes only and you have to create your universe within the confines of these 12 notes so what actually happens now let me not talk for the gifted people and for the rare occasion of strokes of genius because genius truly cannot be explained but not every song comes from the heavens not every song is a gift of the almighty so what happens during these other times so let me try and illustrate with an example okay so imagine that you are actually uh, traveling it's monsoon now so imagine that you are traveling to goa say and you are driving through the konkan belt you have been driving the whole day in the evening you reach uh, somewhere in the middle of the konkan belt in maharashtra and it's beautiful the road is nice it's drizzling a little it's green all around you and there is you feel a sudden craving for a cup of tea so you you know you look around for a tea shop or a thela or a tapri as we call in maharashtra so you look around for a tea shop on the way and uh, in a beautiful uh, scenario you find there is a tea shop at the road side it's beautiful there the whole scenery is beautiful lovely uh, so you get down from your car and you cross the road as you are crossing the road suddenly the drizzle turns into a shower and you become wet you go there to the tea shop 
now because you are with the craving for that cup of hot steaming tea has increased and you ask the person at the tea shop to prepare a cup of tea for you and in his aluminum vessel which is quite dirty and that's the rule the dirtier the vessel the better the tea so he pours in a cup of tea in a glass you circle your fingers around that glass and take in all that warmth that is there in the tea cup before actually sipping the cup of tea immediately you feel calmer and you feel that you know the time is slowing down you take the first sip of tea and suddenly you feel that time has now stopped the whole scenery is beautiful birds are going back home in a distance you hear the cow bells because even the cows are coming home now it's dusk although it has stopped raining the droplets of golden colored water are now seeping down the leaves of the trees in the distance you see the houses with mangalore tiles and now dim lights lighting up in those houses and it's beautiful all around and you feel that time should stop here and it shouldn't move ahead if there is heaven on earth it is this moment but that doesn't happen time moves forward and then you continue your journey but that moment is forever etched in your mind but unknown to you or unobserved by you there was something else that was happening at the tea shop when you were standing there and what was happening what was happening was that apart from this aluminum vessel and a cup of tea and the beautiful atmosphere there was a transistor radio at the tea shop and it was playing vivid bharati and this song was being played hmm o phir ke wali tu kal phir aana नहीं फिर जाना तू अपने जबान से के तेरे नैना है जरा बेईमान से ओ फिर की वाली सो दिस सॉन्ग वॉज प्लेइंग नाउ डज दिस सॉन्ग हैव एनी थिंग टू डू विथ कोंकण नो डज इट हैव एनी थिंग टू डू विथ द मानसून नो डज इट have anything to do with a beautiful romantic evening no and yet next year when you are in your house in mumbai or pune or delhi or indore or london or new york when you open the windows and you see the clouds forming and come in together black clouds you don't remember rag mallar you remember the notes of phirki wali why because that is your unique association with the monsoon which nobody else has got and that is why different music composers when they are given even the same set of lyrics they will compose differently because they have their own associations of that particular experience in this case the rains or the monsoon so now if somebody tells me make a song on the rain i won't go to na 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 
सो आई वॉन्ट यूज मे घराग बट दिस फिरकी वाली इज स्टिल मूविंग इन माई माइंड तर दू वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट फर्स्ट दैट होल फिरकी वाली सॉन्ग इज डी कंस्ट्रक्टेड एंड इट बिकम्स इट लूजेस इट्स क्रिस्टलाइजेशन एंड इट बिकम्स एब्स्ट्रैक्ट वॉट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ टर्निंग टू एब्स्ट्रैक्शन इज दैट यू लूज द वर्ड्स uh you you actually you lose the tempo because that is definite so phir ki wali tu kal phir aana nahi phir jana becomes oh phir ki wali tu kal phir aana nahi phir jana then you lose the words the words are dropped dara ra tara dara dara tara ra ra and then these clouds of notes take the form of your own imagination although the inspiration behind them is phirki wali and then what happens tara tara ra tara ra tara ra tara dara ra ra dara dara tara ta ra ta tara ta tara tara and then your own words come in bhige bhige lam ho ki bhigi bhigi yaade bhige bhige ho tho pe bhige bhigi yaade sorry bhige bhige lam ho ki भीगी भीगी यादे भीगे भीगे हो ठोके भीगे भीगे वादे भीगी भीगी सांसों का मिलके उलझना सारी पहेलियों का पल में सुलझना सुलझी पहेलियों के बनते थे नग में रंग जाती फिर में तेरे रंग में भीगी भीगे लम हो कि भीगी भीगी यादें भीगे भीगे हो ठोके भीगे भीगे वादे na 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 o phir ki wali so an entire new song comes up from a song that has actually no relevance in the eyes of somebody else and perhaps when if you had listened to bhige bhige lamho ki the link i will give in the description box you won't even imagine that the source of inspiration has been phirki wali because that song has nothing to do with the other song except for your own experience and that's why people are unique and they look at music differently that's why it's good to have so many music composers making so many songs and every time you know to a mathematicians they will a mathematician might say that the possibilities are limited because you have 12 notes so what will be the permutation combination of these 12 notes and how many tunes will you make but every time 
people come up with new tunes and the song lives on eternally thanks for watching and uh, this time i have done a live let me know in the comments section how you are liking the podcast if you like it do share it with your friends subscribe and let me know if you feel that i should talk on some particular topics and i'll be there thank you thanks for watching